So I'll just I'll introduce it sure now. Um, this is an oral history interview for the Echoes of the Decade project for the Culture Division of Donegal County Council. Today is the 20th of November 2020. My name is Regina Fitzpatrick and today I'm speaking with Jimmy McGill and uh, we're on recording the interview on the phone because of the current COVID-19 restrictions. Uh, which means, unfortunately, I can't can't go up and meet you in person, Jimmy. Um, but um, thanks a million for your time again, Jimmy. And we had a great chat the last day uh, talking about your family history and um, about that period in the 1910s and the 1920s and your father's and your and your relatives involvement in that. Um, I was interested listening back that um, you mentioned the Molly Maguires. Um, yeah. in relation to kind of some of the mining communities in Pennsylvania. And uh, I was just wondering, you were saying some relatives of yours were in that. And I, I was just wondering if you'd have any, any, any more information about that or what else you can tell me about the Molly Maguires. Uh, well, they were, they were in the, in the coal region and, and uh, were, I don't know whether you've seen the film and were a film made about it some years past. I haven't seen it now. I've heard of it, no, but I didn't see it. Well, yes, there were, there were relations here. There were Macaulay's here. They were related to us through the McGill's. The McGill woman that left here, she'd be an aunt of my father's left here, went to America, well, I think in the 1800s or something back then. And uh, she married him a Macaulay man. He was from Donegal too, some part. But they, they, they were, their family was, I think they were in this extras, in this, I think they weren't greedy really at the top, in the top end of the film, but they were in this extras, I think, in that film, the Molly Maguire's. But because uh, there was in the coal region, but the most on the goal was and went to America that time, and to the coal mines they went anyway, most of them, the men did. And would the would there have been men from around there who were in the Molly Maguire's organisation? They probably were further back, but I did, I didn't get that trace. That the man that Macaulay man he used to come here, but he's dead now. This good point he used to come here to see his relations, mm. but uh, he would have. But we didn't talk that much about it at the time, of course. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, he he knew we all about it. Gosh. Uh, probably it would be. So it could be traced up that most of that stuff, I would think. Mm. And of course, there was a, a long history of emigration from there over to, would it have been mainly America or Scotland or where and how did people emigrate, I suppose, maybe in the 18th, well, 1800s or well, beginning of the 1900s? Around, around, around here, it was mostly to America, but Further down the line here in the lower end of this county where they get a gas at key door in that area, them nearly all went to Scotland. Uh, in that area. Even when even in England you wouldn't get very many people. The most of the Irish around here even went to Scotland. And, and was that what type of work did they do over there, Jimmy? Oh, mostly out on the on the buildings. That's what they had. And some of them used to go to the potato diggers from Donegal. They used to go to Scotland for digging the potatoes or the, the tatty diggers, they called them. Mm. They used to go at the end of the year, September, October. But, uh, and the women went over too, from not around here, but down the door area mostly. They went over to, get, to collect the potatoes, pick them up and put them into the bags. It's men in the digging spade with a spade. <coughs> and would people have, in your father's generation, say, would um, people who had emigrated, I know your father and mother, mother moved to America and then they came home in 1932, but I'm guessing that was kind of unusual. You don't hear of people moving back from America very much, or, or was it unusual? No, it was unusual because the problem, most of them couldn't afford to come back. They had nothing that couldn't, maybe hadn't their pasture pack in from the 1930, 29 to 32 for the 
big depression. Mm. So that, uh, my father was he pro, he was working. He, he was in the carpenters union over there, and he uh, he probably would have. At the composed or two big trunks he <laughs> landed mm. <clears throat> on the Cunard liner from New York to Belfast in 1932. The two trunks are still here, <laughs> but they're not they're not in good shape now. Two massive big ones. But uh, and would you have heard he, much he went about? Away. He went away. He, he was waving too here after he came back in the. During the, I think, the Second World War, there was a lot of weaving going on here in this area. We and, and weaving uh, was big in that area. Oh, it was big in this area. It was, it was uh, the the well, weaving with the homespun the way back was. They were making their own webs. So women would tease the yarn and 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 spin it, and then they would give it to some weaver to make, and then they were sold in. We were marked in a dry place. Yes, I Well, it wasn't going that thing, but there was somebody who used to buy this stuff. And it was, it was terrible hard to weave. It all depended on the, who, who, who done the spinning. Yes. <laughs> and uh, there were a lot, there were, there were a terrible lot of weavers around here, handling weavers. And would the and weavers one, have had, would they have had looms? No, uh, they had. Well, there was one loom up here in this old house behind here. And two or two or three weavers used to use it to make webs for these people. But uh, I remember them up there in the in the forties making the homespun webs up there. They used to have a candle on the beam beside them at night. But I reckon then at night it was I, I don't believe it yet. The, that uh, that they were that they would go better. They wouldn't break as much at night because the sheep were sleeping. <laughs> But I don't, I don't believe that really. God, so there was kind of superstition and folklore well, around it. Was, and... uh, uh, yeah. But they had no lights. The lights didn't come till 1953, and that made a big. But the uh, homespun finished about that time. Girls had a and opened up an other uh, in the mart, <clears throat> and there was a lot of weavers on there as evidence for a number of years. And McGee's had only got then got going and I weaved for them myself in the in the sixties and uh, they had a lot of weavers. They used to deliver the webs that was a van to the house and collect the one you have made and they they was a, another wet one behind. And they were very McGee's were very good to the small farmers because that's if, if you were busy working out, they wouldn't give you a cloth to make that was very urgent, so you would get time, maybe a week or so, to make it. And what, you know, what, were, you, yeah, what were you making? Was it blankets or...? No, just a web. We didn't... Uh, just a full-length web, so it, uh, it would be about 70 yards long and about 32 inches wide. A full web would be on the loom. And that's what it's called, a web? A web, I. Uh, that that to be, and the all the on the yarn. McGee's supplied the the, the, the yarn, and it's far better than the homespun. <laughs> but uh, if you made a, a we call her a rough web, it'd be only about eleven shots or ten or eleven shots to the inch, threads to the inch. So you would make one of them in a couple of days. But then you have to get the worst of stuff came in. It was a very fine stuff. It'll take you three or four days, but you get more money for it, of course. And the stuck is that is that like the thread? Thread, aye. Yeah. And w- so, if the for the homespun, say before you were working for McGee's, and you know when your father was weaving, uh, w- would that be from your own sheep, or where would the where would the wool come uh, from? Some, uh, there could be different neighbours would would uh, the women would carry it and make. The, Spun it, and then they would give it to the weaver to make. And but there were a lot of odd, good few weavers about. But it was, it wasn't very good. <laughs> it was off all the time breaking as far as I used to hear them on about it. But it wasn't. Uh, <clears throat> they thread then with McGee's then and and got it. They, they thread was a lot better. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be breaking so much in the in the, in the weaving. 
And when you were doing it at home, would that have been, um, would that have been for your own use, or would it have been, or, or would you've been weaving for neighbours? Like, was it to sell the web, or was it, was it just how did it? I suppose the business of no, work, that, if you like. No, no, it was a homespun that what what they done. Some of them done it here. They done they done their own house that they were spinning here and carting wool by hand, but. Uh, once my geese and got there and got going, that stopped. They supplied the yarn to you then, mm. and that that uh, the, the the webs went back to them. Gosh. And was it? And, w- was it? Was it? Um, like, were there different roles in the process for men and women? Like, was it women that spun and men that were weaving, or or did it matter? Well, no, it was the women done the spinning and the and the stuff and. Some of them used to pull the bobbins too for for the men, but the women too. They were they were nothing. Or some people now there are they used to get nothing done. They used to nut pullovers and gloves and stuff to get, and they were down to our town where there were a couple of people there who were sent in it somewhere else. I, I don't know what the word is, but there were a lot of people. And embroidery was a big thing with the women here too. Sprigging, they called it here. But uh, there were a lot of women at that too. Oh my God. So all these kind of home crafts, you know. Ah, uh, home, ah. Uh, well, then they used to nut socks and put over for the men or heavy socks and or wellingtons up or heavy boots. They used to wear, do that too. Hand, hand and would there have been, um, and I suppose that would they have done it at night time mostly, or was it? Um, oh, it would uh, be done at night. Well, the winter time it would be done, but in the summertime, they, all, they were out too in the field. The women were out in the field helping with a harvest too. Yes. But it's mostly at night then, this will be done. At And you mentioned um, just the bit of kind of folklore around, you know, weaving at night. Was there yeah. any other little bits of superstition around the whole thing or any other sayings or anything like that? Oh, there was, oh, there was superstitious old, you know, old people the way over, loving the big kind of relation. Oh, there would, if there was somebody going to die and they would say that we're coming down to rake at night, they would say they met this person on the road somewhere and and this would say oh, that person's going to die. Well they did die for that whether they were telling the truth or not. And the banshee was another one. The banshee was only to hear this wailing at night and lights go down the outside to the hall. But I seen the lights myself and people thought they were fairies or something. But now they think it's some kind of uh, bird or some not a bird but some other thing that was there but that, that died out anyway whatever they were but the people thought that they were they were very super, superstitious that way yes yeah yeah they were, yeah they were very lonely at night even the growing up because it was all ghost stories they were telling these old people <laughs> and the, even the men some of them wouldn't even go out at night on their own and would would people have gathered at night time? Like, would you have had visitors? Was it a card playing house you said you had? Oh, it was. It was a place up, this old house up. And even here, when the old house up there was full of being out in the wintertime playing cards. But to be all night, to be all night, you should be talking, of course. But there were no money on the cards at all, but there were plenty of rows. <laughs> and would they, what games were they playing? Oh, 25, and they had loads and tracklands. I don't know what that was, I forget, but that was the name, loads and tracklands. That would be Irish. But uh, they, were, uh, they used to play on buttons, because buttons were used a lot. That time for sewing onto the trousers or the coats. And, and they used to play on them. It was a bit serious, I tell you. It got, it got, it got tense. <laughs> <laughs> But now, next night, to be back again playing, there'll be no word of it again. Yeah, yeah. And would there have been music at all around you? No, there were a lot of puddlers here, but they used to have dancers, card-playing dancers here. 
uh, the, the Puddler to other, a lot of Puddlers are, are about. And the, the cards played first on some, they will they put up something that will be in later years. They put up something, maybe a cab or something on, on the cards, and the house will be full, and they'll play cards on to maybe one o'clock, and then they'll be da- the women will be invited then, and they would, the dance will go on tomorrow. Mike, all during the night, my God. <laughs> And what kind of dance would it have been Irish dancers? Oh, it would be or... Irish, mostly Highlands and stuff like that, and, and the Maggie Packy and and and, and the lot of that mostly that there wouldn't be no modern dancers. It would be all Irish dancing. And so Highlands it would have been a big the Highland thing. Uh, Highland flinging that uh, the the uh, the water. Uh, Shoe the donkey. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was it. It was. And would you know of uh, like what kind of tunes they'd be playing? Would you remember any of the names of the tunes or anything like that? Uh huh. Would you Would you remember any of the names of the tunes they'd be playing? Oh, the the dead. Well, I knew the paddlers and the, oh, they were going. up. was that these things myself were going up. That was that was going up to, into the fifties. At least in the well into the fifties, when this this car playing dancing was going on, and then the school dancing started. Then the schools for the for to gather money for the schools. That 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 went on for a number of years too, to collect money for to keep the for the schools to keep the schools going. And where would those dances take place? They're taken in every school. Were, they were dan- a dance a bit, in a big school around the area and probably in other places too, I'm not right, but they were here in this parish. And would they have been all uh, traditional music as well? It would, be, uh, it would be mostly that time, but it was changing a bit at that, that stage. It would be old time waltzes and maybe quick steps and things going, starting up that time, but it was mostly the older, older type dancing. Mm. Would there have been singers around you? Or would there have been... Uh, just... No, there were singers. There were very good singers. Like Miguel was up here. But it's funny, our crowd didn't take whatever. They... <laughs> but the Miguel's next door, they were very good singers. And and all that crowd was good. They're, but our, on our side of the Miguel's, as a teacher, you see, we were all crows. <laughs> And would there have been Shanno singing or? Pardon? W- would there have been Shanno singing around ye? Oh, it would be. Oh, the one used to come here to us. We would love to bowl the neck, you paddy boy. And he, he used to visit here. He knew my mother well. He was from, originally from Old Glenties. And he, we used to enjoy him coming in because we were waiting for him to sing. And so why Patty he wasn't recorded because he was a very good singer. And what what was he his name again? He was Paddy Boyle. Boyd. He loved to put a half mile up the road and he lived on his he, well his people was all dead that he was living on his own the time he used to come down here. He used to come a lot of nights and your mother used to give him milk and stuff to take up and maybe bread. But uh he was a great, he was very good at, they used to come a lot of travellers, he used to stop with them and he used to get these songs also. He used to, these, uh, and he used to put them up for the night. God. And what sort of songs, do you remember the names of any of the songs or? Well, Barbary Allen was one of them, that was one I remember terribly well, it's a big, a very long song. But I think that was still on the go somewhere, I think I heard it somewhere. And, Another one he sang was Own Row O'Neill. I never hear anyone singing that song much anymore. And uh, that's another song I don't hear on television or anywhere at all. The 32 counties of Ireland. He used to Donegal, which your people be even told. He used to anthem. And to Derry. To Galway and to Rhone, where O'Neill once held his own. And he used to Gallant Tipperary. That uh, I never heard that that song been sung anywhere since. So it sounds like when you were growing up, Jimmy, um, in Aicha, that 
you know, th there was, I suppose, uh, there'd be a lot of people calling to the house of an evening. There was a, but, uh, you know, h hard work on the farm, but then, you know, a, a nice well, social element to it as well. It was because the haystack made people, anyone came here to the haystack here, you had to go back to them people all again, maybe the were. Even I remember a stack, a haystack being out. We had a lot of hay that long, good while back. And there were 17 men here, along with the old myself. And then I had to go back to all them people again when they were making them the, the stacks. But uh, the bog was the same. You swapped about. The turf cutting was done behind the coast. That, well, that's gone now. It might be a, a very odd person doing it now. But that's... Uh, the people were mixing more. Mm. Yeah. And what were the big, I suppose, agricultural events that you'd, you'd have the turf cutting, the hay stacking? What else would be where people would come, would, would come together? What other kind of um, work? Well, uh, well most of maybe at, at the sheep too, or I don't know. The sheep, but they would go to help each other with that. too, was a shearing and stuff, and in the fair days, there were a fair day in our drive once the first day of every month. People I used to used to come, uh, people there with a a cart, and they would be selling small wee small pigs, we bun ones they called them, and a lot of people would buy one and, and they would take it home and and they would feed it up. To the Christmas, and then that pig would be killed. The butcher would come round and he'd kill the pig for it. And that, that part of that song, the bacon, I hung from the ceiling. Uh, and they used to then buy, they used to buy heaven in a big way and, and salt it in a barrel, a big full barrel. And that would be, that would be, that would do them for the whole winter. And Maybe they were divided out with neighbours too, some if they hadn't any. And you were talking about the pigs there. Would you would the whole of the pig be used then when it was killed? The, the what? The, would the, the would, Yeah, the pig. And all, all the one, all that would be probably get divided out too, and people different maybe people get it they couldn't with. Then would hang, hang up the. On the these thatched houses to work, the beams crossed over, no seating on them, let them and not hang them down from the beam to smoke them. With there be plenty of smoke in the houses inside and out that time. The open fire and uh, the bacon was hung surely from the, from the ceiling. And uh, well, as there were a lot, of that, a lot of that going on, as people keeping the pig that are placed up there. The pigs crawl up behind them, but I don't remember any, and it was before my time. But the name was still there, the pigs crawl. <laughs> so the beat be all, and nearly everybody beat it, but must have been at it. My God. And the craw, what was the craw? The That's craw, a wee small, roundy, <laughs> built up with, with stones and, and sods. Oh, okay. And the pig, place the pig was kept. All right. Right. Would you have salted the pigs? Ah? Huh? Were the pigs salted? Oh, they'd be salted. They'd be cured at them. Or whatever. I don't know how that... I've never seen that done, but the, the bacon was cured. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe, when... maybe maybe it's potching to put on it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and would there have been potching stills around you? Oh, God, the potching was very common that time. Was I it? Mean, there were, well, there were, there were people... And and further on the mountain, was famous for making potching. Even the weddings here, the weddings were nearly all at home. The, and the woman away on the the mountain with a bag and to, uh, to come back with a bag of potching for the for the wedding. But uh, the guards were full time after them, of course. But they never caught very many of them. <laughs> My gosh! And a bag? How? Would, what kind of a bag would they? A bag of potching? Like how? How would that work? Or how? What? Oh, they would take some kind of bag with them, up and on and, and the back. It was a long distance under them, and I knew the pep, pep, some of the ones I front and forward indeed. 
Jeg tror, så prøvde den dykke et nøje og nemlig. Du har smaget, så var jeg nået der om morgenen. Og dem var han sådan nært med et lak. Og så prøvde var så big. Og fik et bad prøvde den, jeg tager i, at jeg var besagt for at røde. Og så fik jeg godt an, at jeg var rundt og jeg var på. Så var det. Covered with parking, and then we would put the rest of it and, and put some of it outside and put the rest of it inside. <laughs> I'd heard that about, um, <laughs> like, uh, people playing football and that sort of thing, rubbing putting on muscles with that, on legs, yeah. and that. Is that something that you would have done as well? Oh, well, I would have done it regular. You know what I mean? I don't know myself. I wouldn't have got hurt it outside and you would keep rubbing parking onto it. But... Uh, the most they took in, more of it inside than out. <laughs> you need to take both approaches to it. <laughs> did, they, did they make it up that country? Did, did they, were they making the parching up the Midlands that time much? They were. Well, yeah. Yeah, I remember parching being made down where I was from. Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, I don't remember them being caught very much either. <laughs> But I remember them using it on um, animals as well, like yeah, rubbing well, it on I animals. Go, and... I, I did give it up in late years. See, the, 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 they were given the fire, that time they used to do it outside in the smoke. Ah, so, right. It would alert the guards. But now, since the gas thing came in later years, it can make it in the house and you, you wouldn't even know the people who are making it. Right. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, when so would were there were there certain families now you don't have to name names but was there was, was it, would it be in a family that you know a particular families well, would, made pochin and no it wouldn't be that yeah. it would be all oh, there were certain people oh, you knew exactly where to go yeah <laughs> but you had to you had to keep very quiet about it but yeah yeah it was you knew exactly who was making it oh my god yeah yeah and would there have been other would there have been when you were talking about kind of using it as a cure. Would there have been other kind of cures that that you would have had, you know? Uh, there were a lot of there were a lot of plants and stuff they used to use here for different cures, but so I have a lot of them forgotten. The old people used to use them a, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the the, the do you get to think? Well, nettle soup they used to make the nettle soup here, and oh, and post that was made. So a lot of iron, iron and nettles, and. No, they used to chew away some of them herbs. I think the the mint, mint was another one that's growing down here, uh, growth and soft kind of still growing here. And uh, they used to chew it, it, it raw. They used to chew it, but to be a well smell off your breath. Even the cows, the cows are they here. The cows generally didn't eat it, but they. If they did eat it, you would get the taste of the milk next, next day. And what was the mint good for? A uh, wild mint. Yeah. Mint. And what, what did that help you with? Or what did it cure you of? Well, I don't know what it really was. It probably was a cure for most things. Yeah. They got the uh, buckleberries in and uh, the clothes and that's like a big hat. They used to use that for heart trouble, I think. And uh, the fairy symbol was another one, but I don't know what, what but I know that a lot of them plants that, that, they were, that they were curing the, the, anim, the animals generally wouldn't eat them anyway, so the animals must have known that they were poisoning them. Uh, even rhubarb there, now the, <clears throat> the, the leaves of the rhubarb is poisonous, but the animals won't touch rhubarb or any other kind of vegetable you have out there. To let them. Gosh, yeah, yeah. And when you when you were growing up, Jimmy, um, how many brothers and sisters did you have? Uh, three brothers and two sisters. The and brothers is all. The, the three brothers. Charlie was the oldest. He was the only one got any kind of education here, and he he was working with the Irish Press in Dublin for a while, I think, and then he, he went to England. And uh, he got married over there to a court woman, <clears throat> but he died. In, he died in 19, He died when he was thirty-three. Oh God! I went to work to the time he was dying. 
We have two children now. The youngest was only three weeks. Oh, God, I'm sorry. And uh, he was not, on Reading, he was in the hospital there, and I was over there when he, when he died. And uh, I knew he was going to die, he said, told me he was going to die. But he, he was, he was, uh, uh, he was 33 years at the time. His wife then, Mona, she, she had the two children there and she, she, she got bad heart trouble and she had a, some kind of a, a regulator or whatever you call them. And, but she, she dropped dead outside the house. About, I think about 10 years later, than after he died, I was over, I went over there again that time, and then the son was only about 10, I think, and my sister was over with me, and she was not, and we took come the girl was about 14 or 15, and she she stayed with people there, and she, neighbours were Irish, so very good to them, and she, she stayed on. <laughs> The two of them are still still going. Oh, the girls, she's in England, and the boy went to America, but uh, they're they're still on the go. Oh, my gosh. The other two brothers, then John was younger than me, and Pat was a year older. They they were in America, and the two, both of them died this last few years, and the two wives died too there in, in America. So I. I well, they were up. Pat was over the eighty, I think, or maybe eighty-one. Right? And John was well; he was a good, a good bit younger. But that the family, Nancy and Peggy, Nancy's living down here, but she came back when she retired. She was married to Jack Hart. He was from Straban, <clears throat> and they came back and they built the house down beside us here. About twenty years ago, so she st- she Jack died there from a few years ago, and she's living on her own here. Her her family's all in America. So. We're out in Texas and around there somewhere. There's so so much emigration, Jimmy. Well, emigration was wild. The fifties was wild to get us. That. There were a terrible lot left here in the fifties, mm. and that's why the Irish, that Spanish, the Irish up here are all around this area because the men there they all went away. Oh and and before I get to the fifties, because I want to, I know you went over and back to England as well in the fifties, but just before I get to that, could I ask you just about um, wh- where did you go to school and and what was that like? Well, the school was only about my bracket school. That's the same place these children still go into that school. And we Paddy was a teacher there. He was big into Irish too. We cousin of our own. And, uh, well, once when I left when I was 14, everybody did except that if you were rich people, you went to college somewhere. But the ordinary people all left at 14 and uh, I worked to, uh, came home here then and after I worked to, uh, the a farmer across here, he was, well, he had a lot of land and I used to be over at him when I was 15 or 16. He had seven shillings a day that time, but uh, the day would be <laughs> for no end to the day, <laughs> but uh, it was handy to get it at the time. And, and, and going back to school for a minute, would you have um, had your schooling in English or in Irish? Oh, the school, the, the, that would be the Bracky school, was a, what they called it, the Brack grant, that was a much school. But there'd be three days Irish in it and two days of English. Monday and Wednesday and Friday was Irish days. And Thursday and Tuesday and Thursday was two for English. But most of uh, we party was like he would be big into the Irish anyway. He would be. Oh, you learned all the history of the world. <laughs> you knew you'd be. Well, uh, if you stayed, anyone stayed up the ones of twelve. You, you went into stocks and shares and stuff. And and us, we didn't know much about stocks and shares. 
but his history and geography was the two big ones there. And what but, what was kind of history were they teaching you? How far up along did they go? Oh, well, history was you was a world history. You had to go way back. All what happened years and years ago, and then the geography you had you had to know all the rivers and and every country in the world. And every every city and every country, we had I could need to name them all up. We had to know them. Yet even it was just you know it was taught and to you. But the Irish ones end of all the Irish was all an Irish. The names of the towns, but we had a, a lot of. I was a good for before before I could figure the the name the English names in some of the towns in Ireland even. And would would the, the would they have talked about the War of Independence or nineteen sixteen or anything like that when you were in school? No, uh, no, no, I'm not at school. I would say not. Mm. not wouldn't they would? Uh, they'll go back and tell you the nineteen sixteen leaders all right. That part of it, they wouldn't. They wouldn't get into into the, the, that. Would be big politics here. Yeah, <laughs> it wouldn't do to take it up at school. I would think. Right at the time. And di- and would religion have played a big part in school? Oh, religion was a big thing in it, of course. And then there would come a, a priest round and the scholars there when they'd be about 12 and they would go round the mall to see would any of them go join the priesthood. And a lot of them did. The ones, a lot of them did go away to Limerick in different places, colleges. And... There were very few of them finished up as priests, but most of them finished up as teachers, or secondary teachers. Did I know if they got educated all right? But there were a bit, an odd one here and there that, that went the whole way to be a priest. And the nuns, the nuns too, was another one. But the nuns, they're all gone now too, they? they don't hear of anyone joining the nuns anymore. And who, who would who would have been the parish priest when you were growing up? Well, the father would Father Burton, as far back as I can remember, Father Canon Burton was in Adara, and he was. He was one thing I remember him by him at the front of his jacket was all covered with snuff. He did be using snuff a lot, but uh, he was that was strict. That in other words, white congregation in Adara, but only was Saturday evening mass that day. But the church on, on Sundays we packed because they used to open the wonders in the church at, at mass time because there were people painting inside of the heat. We were pulled off to walk in a long distance. Yes, yes. And would there have been any, um, was there football around you or any sport around you? All this football, we were at the football here. The schools was a big into that. The schools, one school was playing against the other here. That was, I was at that myself. <laughs> that went on for until the, but the, the challenge matches between the schools. Right. You know, that was, was that's still going. I think that type of stuff is still going about it. The school, the school crowd. And who who would have been, or what would have been your local GAA club? Oh, to be uh, well, uh, there I would be, but Bracky, Bracky's in at their own team. Or co- co- the counted the but once they got into the senior thing, it was on uh, there. I would be go to play for. Ah, okay, okay. And who would have, who would have been the big rivals in Ardra? Well, uh, go there. Uh, there I would play to it. Was many different ones here that I can't. In later years, or. The Malloys could have big into it, and, and the Gabigans were good at it. They had later years, but way back, I can't. There were so many different ones in there, and playing for <clears throat> some of them played for the county. And would, would, would there have been any, I suppose, politics in the GAA when you were growing up? No, no, there wasn't. No, there wasn't really. Not that no, that didn't seem to make any difference. To what crowd you belong to in that line? No, no, the politics didn't didn't come into the GEA. But there were more or less on the 
Ebert side, I would think, the GAs themselves. They would have been on the what side, sorry? Uh, I would say they would be on the uh, IRA side, not the real IRA, but on, on that yeah, for a uh, United Ireland side, would say. Yeah, yeah. Not to the GA because they didn't, they didn't want, to, wouldn't allow any Protestant to play for them. And so they were banned from playing for the GA, and that wasn't a good idea, indeed, because the Protestants around here, they were very good. I mean, even in, since, even when the war was going on, and the, the Protestants didn't take any part of any kind, and and. Uh, in the, that that time, and, and they were very good neighbours here. They didn't take any part in the war of independence or the civil war or anything. They, they kept well away from that. And so, no, no Protestants played played GAA. No, I think Around now they opened up their rules as far as I'm reading about. I think they're in Northern Ireland now. They're trying to get and again let them play the GAA for play Gaelic football. Well, the Protestants around here used to go to the games in Little Orbit. If Donegal was playing, they would, so they, were, they would support them, even they couldn't play for, for them. Mm. And do you remember going to Ulster finals and those sorts of games over the years? No, no I remember, never went to the Ulster. But most, a lot of people around here did. But some of them that at that time and later years, some of them had, had their own cars, and I would get a car because at the same was in England. You didn't need a car in England because you were in the cities and the trains and buses. And when I came back here, then the, the, we were in a very steep hill here, and it wouldn't be a very safe place for learning to drive. Yes. <laughs> and so when you finished school, then. So you would have been in school um the war was going on when you were in school, wasn't it? Uh, oh, it was. I, I was going to school from the war, Second World War was going on. I remember that. The, the rations came on then and the smuggling started. Tell me about that. Uh, the the back ends, but it was just... Well, the money made it at the smuggling that day, indeed. But... Uh, 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 Oh, I remember the ration books and stuff. And what were people smuggling? Was it tobacco? Oh, tobacco mostly and uh, different things. The tea and... See, it was, <laughs> it was a racket. You got your rations of tea. And then if you wanted the deer tea, you would get it too in the same shop because there was an old woman down beside I think I told you that before. She was shopping, she was getting her pension, and she worked. She got her ration of a tea. And then she wanted some more tea. And the shopkeeper dumped the thing in, dumped the, the deer tea out of the same box. And she says, I don't know how it under God you've had to pack the deer tea out of that box. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, well, no. Gosh. And what was it like during the war around there? Well, it was well. I, well, I wasn't very big the time. At that the time, I was I was going to school, all right. But I remember the more I was seeing an airplane passing, and I said that oh, that was a German plane. But that was only yes. What we know. The, the, yeah. yeah. And would would it was it a would you've been listening to news reports on the radio or? Well, no, there was no radio. There was only uh, there was no radio around here. The first radio members up in the houses, the shoemakers, the colleges, there were shoemakers. So we get us two for a couple of houses per there. And uh, the only first time I listened to a radio was nineteen forty seven, when. Cabin and Kerry were playing in the polo grounds in New York. The Laird and Pine, the last only time ever it was played over there. And the house was full up there. And uh, there were, were the reason mostly we'd interested were a fellow from Glentish, Columbia, McDair. He was from the, he was 
like a cultured man or something. He was playing for Cavan, and we were. I could name them all off up to late years. I had some of them, but I could name them teams off by heart, Kerry and Cavan. But uh, that the radio saying there weren't so very few radios about to you till well, from there on the stain the radios came on a lot. Yes, yeah. And then the te- the televisions didn't the radios once the power came here, the ESB came here in nineteen fifty three. And that, that was a, made a big change in things. Was it? If, tell me about the changes, uh, how, how life changed. Yeah, the lights, that uh, we were, uh, well, they had hardly, they had wee small lamps stuck up on the side of the wall and and the power, so the light came in. So everyone put in a 40-watt bulb. If you put on, on, on a light now with a 40-watt bulb, <laughs> you will think you were in the dark. But they thought it was a great, great light. My goodness. And that did the, the that was a big big change. My and from goodness. then on it kept getting advancing all the time. Gosh. And and that was in the fifties? Uh nineteen fifty three the main line we were beside the main line here and we guard Midland Quick that time. But there were some other town lands away in the mountain and places there were a good few years after that before they got it. My gosh. Gosh, it was such a massive change, wasn't it? Of life. Oh, so yeah. It was it made a dose of white during yeah. up. And was it in the fifties you were over and back to England working? No, uh, the fifties so it was I the one was eighteen, I think in eighteen fifty four and we got on the went to Belfast on a boat and it was terrible. I remember it was terribly stormy and the one nearly everybody in the boat was sick. But that I think it took seven hours to go to Haitian and uh, I landed there at the change of crew and I remember very well. And did you but did then, you go over on your own, Jimmy, or did you go over? No, around? there were a couple of neighbours here, on the, but then we slept there to go there in England. They went to I went into London, but I knew a couple of some people there. But... Uh, the work was very plentiful over there. It just wasn't that well, while they were damaged on during the Second World War and there was plenty of work you would you could go into three different jobs the same day if you wanted to. And it was all, all building work. All building work. And what type so of sites I, well, did I you would work know on? That. Yeah. The second time I went to where we were landed in London. And no reading I went to. And there was, I had a full day's work done. Started at 10 o'clock, landed there at 10 o'clock, and I got a job right away. And uh, I had a full day's work done before I went to look for digs. My God. But uh, the work was so plentiful there. But it was all hard work, though, no machinery going, all, all was hand work, the same as here digging and shoveling the dig and the pick. And was it mostly Irish lads on the sites? Oh, more, uh, nearly all in the Balkan sites. You would hardly ever get an Englishman on the Balkan sites. Nearly all Irish. I worked, in Kilke- I worked with two fellas in Kilkenny. I knew them very well. And I used to go to the dance and, and Hammersmith with them. I think they had a, they had a sister who I knew her. But I forget their names. But they were wild bunnies. I used to wild cry. That would be some... Tight stories told in the Balkan sites. I tell you, you couldn't you couldn't retell them anyway. <laughs> and would you get digs then with other Irish people? Ah, uh, there were digs while I was down. In, well, it was now and uh, it was a long time in that place. It was in, in London and Battersea. Uh, the landlady she was from Mayo, and she was married to a Corkman, and she was a nurse. We, there were an, a, a neighbour of mine, he was married, he was up to getting married. He, he had the, the, the downstairs flat, the town in the basement. And he, there was a room in the kitchen, so he, they lived in the room, and I went and lived in the kitchen, and there was another friend. And we used to come out the window onto the street. 
Og så var jeg det godt stærre, som kom løgne igen. Da de tænkte slet til mig, at jeg din sjælden så vidt, og de havde det i jeres egen køkken. Og så var det meget mange køkken, der var der. Og så var det en sådan en råb af bræd. Det var meget lidt af bræd. And would you have how 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 long a period of time would you have gone over for? Would you have gone over for a whole year or for a few uh, months? I was most of a year, and it was in nineteen fifty, fifty four, fifty five, fifty six. I was over to I know it was two two or three Christmases in it, but I oh, know the Christmas I was on my own every time it was a Christmas anyway, down in the in the, in the basement. Oh gosh. We won Christmas dinner when I was 21. One must know what to put at all. But uh, then that all changed. <laughs> My God. It was a hard time. Well, the people, that, people had it probably hard before they went away and then they didn't, they didn't think it that. The best, the only thing I, I would say about England, the best man ever I was, I was on, worked on there was an English man, Big Ben. The Irish man, if you if the sweat was running off the Irish man, would tell you to do more. But so, uh, there was a lot of Irish subcontractors there. But this big Ben, he worked for Jarvis. Uh, he's the first man came to me and he told me to take it easy. I was working far too hard. Oh, <laughs> and that's, that's the only time I've had that from anybody. And how were the Irish treated over there generally in your time? Huh? How would the Irish have been treated, kind of generally, over there in your time? Well, the there were there were some people. The upper class didn't like them. Hmm. The, the English upper class, but the ordinary English, there were a lot of them. There were there were nice people indeed. I, I never hmm. had much 